Back All right, here we go. We're live. <laughs> First time ever. I'm with uh, my boy Keenan here. Keenan Williams. We are at the uh, alley right now. It's a co-working space in the city. This is the uh, the spot where I started everything. Um, when I was first starting the company. Um, and now Keenan just moved in. Got his first office. And uh, we're doing our first Facebook Live. I've never done it. I don't buy it. Uh, Keenan's first one as well. And uh, so I wanted to do a video today um, based on a conversation that Keenan uh, and I had earlier this week. So just to get some quick backstory. Um, I won't speak too much for Keenan here, but he uh, he jumped from the the corporate world. What was it? How long ago? A year? A year? A year? Years a, a year? Yeah. Shit. A year. A year ago uh, today, jumped from the uh, the corporate world, started uh, started work on his company, and uh, last week um, something happened um, with his young company that. Uh, it's pretty major, and to me, that's why the title of this thing is called "Welcome to the Club," um, because you know it's one thing when you when you're starting a company and you're going through it, um, you know, kind of just like going along, um, versus you know when when kind of shit happens and you're like, uh, how the how the hell am I supposed to get through this? Um, it's like having a stomach for it. Um, you don't really know what that means until you actually go through it. Um, you know. You, might hear people talking about it like being an entrepreneur is hard, having a startup is hard, um, but until you actually do it and then go through certain experiences, um, you don't really understand what it means. So, you know, I've, I've been doing this for about four plus years now, um, but I feel like Keenan, uh, and, and the other thing is once you have that kind of experience, like sharing that experience with someone else who's had that experience, it, it takes on a whole new meaning. Uh, so now when I talk to Keenan, he can kind of relate to me a little bit more now uh, after going through certain experiences. Um, so anyways, wanted to kind of go through the experience, have, have Keenan share his his story um, for everyone. Um, because I think Keenan, you know, he, he knew, he, he's been through a lot. He's been literally living on couches uh, to make his dream a reality. And, and you know, that's hard. Uh, of course, not having money when you're starting out. When I started out, I didn't have money either. Um, same kind of thing. But it's not until that point where you feel like you might actually lose your business and everything you've worked for that it's like, holy shit, this is real. Um, so that happened to Keenan this week. Um, so uh, I'm going to turn it over to him. I, I just want to uh, have him share his story with you to, to show you, like, this is the real shit. And, and maybe also... Have you talked a little bit about um, how you thought it was hard until this kind of happened? Yeah. Uh, so first things first, the thought of what's hard about entrepreneurship was totally changed by my most recent experience, but this year has been a huge eye-opener in general. Uh, I would say initially coming into this, I thought it was just about sacrifice, just about hustle, and just about consistency, but not any uh, had no awareness about the ups and downs emotionally that you go on. The roller coaster emotionally is what detracts most startup founders. Mm -hmm. um, and this week I had the most emotional uh, peak and trough in one day ever. Uh, so pretty much our business, we're called Resi. Uh, our business is being a digital landlord for rental properties. What does that mean? That means we do everything from find tenants to actually servicing repairs and maintenance. How do you find tenants? You have to do background checks, and you have them give your information, and you pull it all in. But what happens to a company that holds all that personal consumer data? I will tell you, that company has to be under the inspection of all the credit bureaus and data service providers. They tell us in, in advance that you're gonna have inspections. But this week, we had a pop-up inspection. Oh shit. <laughs> so legitimately, uh, we were prepared for the 27th, but we weren't prepared for this past Wednesday. We weren't in an office at all. So they said they were going to come on the 27th. One said they were going to come on the 27th. Uh -huh. The other one didn't even confirm a time. Right. Okay. So he pops up. He's been calling me only from 
a block number and he says, uh, nothing but, hey, it's Jerry, and I always hang up, right? Or, or I always leave the voicemail. Okay. I walk in after lunch with my dollar slice, because that's what I can afford, and what do you th who do you think is sitting in my office, or in the office space? Jerry. No shit. Jerry. <laughs> And the office inspector. At this time, guys, we didn't have an office around here. We had a co-working shared desk. So the story is very simple. I almost dropped my pizza. I get extremely nervous immediately because you can't pass an office inspection without an office. <laughs> you don't have a fucking office. And more right? importantly, you uh -huh. can't bullshit your way out of not having an office because you don't fucking have an office. So we sit down, we have a conversation. He goes through a seven-page document of uh, uh, Q&A, uh -huh. right? And... That goes A-OK-ish, -okay uh, but t comes time he wants to see in the office. Thank God that the co-working space we're in has such supportive staff that already knew in advance that they were, we were gonna get an office. Uh, so they kind of helped me bullshit a little bit toward Did the space. Did they know you were getting an office? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, I'd say seven people, jump from I don't know what's going on to let me act as if, and everyone acted as if, and it primarily went smooth for the first part, but legitimately for about 15 minutes, I thought I would lose the entire business. Um, if you do not pass inspection, there's a very long period of time before you can go get approved again. So what does that mean for a company like Resi that is built on finding tenants and we can't run tenant background screens? That means we can't operate as a business. So legitimately on Wednesday, I thought I lost my company. Been building it for a year. Not even so, alive yet. Let me ask you this. What, when, you, when you saw him, yeah. what was your reaction? Like, what was going through your head? How did you feel emotionally in that, in that moment? First things first, I froze uh, because someone told me as I was walking to my desk. So immediately I was like, get the fuck out of here. Then she points and he's sitting with his back towards me. So I had literally two seconds to be like, all right. And I walked over, hey Jerry, nice to meet you. Right, okay. Um, so Jerry says, hey Keenan, We've been trying to get in contact with him. <laughs> we've, been, we've been reaching out. I was like, really, Jerry, how? Uh -huh. He shows me his document. It says my email address dot com. As you know, our company is dot co. Our email address is dot co. So he's not even supposed to do a pop-up. But they fucked up and didn't have our correct email address. So now I can't tell him to leave. I got to operate as if. Mm -hmm. Operating as if scared the shit out of me. Uh, it made me, for a split second, doubt my sacrifice, question my worth and even the sanity of what would happen if the worst case scenario occurs and we start from scratch again. So how did you play that though? So you have like, basically you have like a couple seconds. For you, yeah. you know, you're walking up, you're like, okay, so I gotta go talk to this guy. Yeah. What's going through your head? How are you preparing or, or does it go into survival mode or, or basically like, how do you get through that shit? Like, it's a ladder in survival mode. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's nothing but just intuition. Mm -hmm. Every single sales perspective or meeting I've ever been in, every client that said yes or no, my entire career for seven years in corporate America, probably for sales, and then all of outright just having some street smarts and thinking on my feet quickly. That's the only thing I say. Yeah. Okay. And so then, but, but when he, when he's going there, and like you need to have an office. So just to recap really quick, Keenan's business relies on getting this approval to prove that he has an office. At this time, when the inspector comes unannounced, that's the fun part. Keenan does not have an office, but the inspector's there saying, "Where where is your office?" Correct. So, and he's there to take pictures. He's not he, there to just meet me. Right, right. He has to physically show proof that we have an office. All right. So, you're, you know, you're still alive. You're still in business. Yep. How did you get through it? What the hell did you say to him? I said, to, hey, uh, I said, hey, Jerry, we were in a two-person. We're transitioning to a four-person office. <laughs> uh, you just caught us in the middle right now. Uh huh. That was off the top of the head. And how did he react to that when you said that? Though? Yeah. Did, you think he actually bought it? Yes. Okay. Impressive. Thank okay. So, so how did you? Here, here's one thing you mentioned earlier was that to kind of get him to go along with this because it's so crucial. This guy, uh, when, whenever you're making any sale, and this was yeah. a sale, oh, it was 100 sale, right? Pitch. It is a, is a huge pitch, right? You have to build some rapport. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So, so how did you? Because this this guy is this, he's 70 years old, right? 60. 60 year old guy, you know. And first glance, n nothing in common nothing. with you, right? Except that he's there to make sure you have your shit on point. Six-year-old Jewish guy from Long Island. Right, and then, then you got Keenan here. So, um, how you build a rapport with someone, because um, I think this, this is really an, an important point here, is being able to, in any sale, you have to build some rapport, uh, be able to relate to the person. 
So how did you do that with this guy? So two things. One, I stopped talking and I started listening. And the more I listened, the more I picked up on who he was, what his character was. He's a Long Island guy and he's proud of being from Long Island. So the first thing I brought up was uh, the Rangers. Mm -hmm. right? But the first thing I noticed before I even spoke about Long Island was his watch. So I'm a timepiece guy. I have something. Really quickly, how, how did you get into this? Did you start asking him like a question about oh, himself? Oh, okay, yeah. So how, how did the so how did it kind of go that full experience? The, the talk track changed where I went from listening and being fearful and being nervous. I was leaning in. I was kind of biting my nails. I was had my hand over my mouth. I wasn't speaking clearly. And then for a second, street sense and survival mode kicked in, and it was like relax. So I leaned back. I started making a more casual conversation. Every time he asked me a question from the survey, I sort of went a little deeper. Well, what do you think about that? Because at that point in time, I realized he's not the decision maker. He's filling out a document that goes to the decision maker. So now my job turns from trying to prove my worth or myself to getting him to write down the best shit for what us. you want. Okay, right. So then, then you're turning it. It is like a sale because oh, you're, in a sense, using him, um, right? Because yeah. you need him to give you the, uh, you know, the good yes. remarks, you know, yes. uh, feedback. Okay. So you start asking him questions. So you're listening to him. And this is key, you know, when you're able to listen to someone, yes. I, I want you to touch on this a little bit more. Yeah. Because th this is the fun part is, you know, you hear things about them and then kind of taking a step further, relating to them. Um, and once they feel like you understand them and kind of relate to them, it stops being a, like an interrogation oh, yeah. and a sale. And then it's like, okay, you're on the same page, right? Yeah. yeah. 100%. It went from a true sales pitch once I calmed down and relaxed to then a conversation when I realized that my job at this point with this person who's not the key decision maker is to befriend him. Mm -hmm. Get on much of his good side because at the end of the day, he's talking to the decision maker. So everything he writes and hears is going to be what I, how I'm represented. Right. So at that point in time, I was like, okay, well, how, how do you best represent yourself? You answer questions creatively. So every time you ask me, instead of being definitive, I was like, well, let me stop and think about it. Let's explore this. Uh -huh. And the more I did that, the more I realized that he was asking questions that he's not even used to. He uh -huh. didn't even write them. Huh. I, I'm like, okay, you're filling out a report. That's all it is. And you're submitting it. It's a doc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's make this jovial. Uh -huh. Conversational. Right. Okay. And, and just to, to recap for the people who just joined, um, so basically... Um, Keenan had his first like gut check. <laughs> gut check of being an entrepreneur uh, this week. He's been at it for for a year, but hasn't really had that like holy shit uh, moment. And he had it this week where he um, had a pop up inspection for his office. office. Problem was he he didn't have an office, so he had to somehow convince this person who um, you know was there to check out his office and literally take pictures. Um, that he uh, he actually has an office. So wait a second. There's another point here. So so you're you know you're kind of uh, befriending him, yep. but he's there to take pictures. Mm -hmm. When does he take pictures? At the end of his seven page survey. What, what did he take pictures of though? If you don't have an office, this office was empty, and I was given a heads up that this is where we would be. So when were you given that heads up? Uh, the same day. All right. Same Good. Day. All right. So, just as an ultimate quick recap, office inspection will be taking pictures. I find out where we will be, but I'm also told the date will be later than today. So he comes at the ultimate wrong time. You cannot be inspected at any worse of a period of time <laughs> because, on top of being inspected, I mean inspected, you don't have any team members there. Oh, and they need to show that you have a team. You have right, and on top, and on top of this, on the office, right, because he's dealing with very sensitive data. You'll see that he put up some uh, screens some here. screens here, right? Privacy screens. Right, these are actually see-through, um, you know, pure glass, but those, those weren't up. He had to put these up. He just did them right now, actually. Um, so you, you show him an office that doesn't have the screens up, and there's no team members here. If, I, if I'm him, I'm, I'm saying, I, I'm calling bullshit, bullshit, right? But he's not, you know, you, you somehow play this off where, you know, he buys it. Well, to, the, to your point of what he bought, he bought the truth. He bought the truth that, hey, we're in the middle. Nothing's organized or ready. He came at the wrong time, mm -hmm. but it will be. And here's what it will look like. Mm -hmm. So that's what he bought. He bought what okay. I told him it would be. See, all right. So you weren't. See, that's a that's a that's a key point, right? He wasn't. Keenan wasn't lying. No, I wasn't lying. He he was telling the truth in such a way that it was convincing Correct. that it it gave him what he needed. 
-hmm. So it made this guy happy. Yep. Um, so he has the information he needs. Yeah. And, and that's actually a key point, I think, with any kind of like, when you're scrambling and getting out, it's like, all right, make that person happy. Don't lie to them. Because if, if, you, if you completely straight up lie, it's gonna come back. That's, what, that's one thing I've learned. That's, Especially Always. with like startups and, and entrepreneurship, right? Once you're, when you lie, yeah. all of a sudden it's like, at some point it's gonna come back, yeah. right? Really. But since this was a truth, and it's much harder to sell a lie, yeah. it, at least for, for me, right? If, if you're Mostly. selling a truth, but it, in such a way that you're framing it in, in a kind of a way that appeases the other person, right? Um, it's still the truth, so it's, it's believable. Yeah. Versus if, you, if you're you know, lying, like you can usually tell. So I think that was a, yeah. a good part. And, and your ability to think so quickly on your feet. Had to. Um, because if you wasn't this fast, and this is where like people get caught up, right? If you can't react oh. uh, and you're not fast, he's like, he basically had a minute to come up um, with, a, with, a, with a, whole story, a whole story, right? Which was true, but he had, to, he had to tell the story in such a way that it was convincing. Correct. But along the way, this is the fun part. This is a really fun part about uh, running a company and being an entrepreneur is that he didn't know how that conversation was going to go, right? No right? You're, you're talking to this guy and, and you have no, no chance to prepare. Even if you have a minute and you're seeing the guy, you can't predict how the hell it's going to go. No. But the one thing is you have a goal, you know, at the end of it, you need to convince this guy that you're legit or he fails you. Yeah. So that is the only thing that matters Literally. in that moment. Very binary. Literally. Like you have to Absolutely. do that. And in the moment, this is the fun part. You have to navigate the waters, the unknown waters to get to that goal, which is, Fucking scary, honestly. Um, um, paddle as you paddle. Yeah, literally. It's like you're going in, and, and this is the scary part, but also the, the fun part um, about entrepreneurship um, is that you, you have to be able to get through it, though. Like, yeah. this is the difference between like getting through it and not. Like, this kind of stuff um, happens more often than you think. Yeah. Um, you know, this was like this was the first like really big scare for for Keenan, but. I've been doing this a while and, and this kind of stuff happens all the time. And you know, it, it's can you get through it? Can you think fast enough, quick enough? Um, and I think that's a big difference between yeah. people who kind of not make it in art, but like, you know, uh, can kind of get through that. Because if you didn't get through that, yeah. then all of a sudden you'd reset, you're like, you fail. Now what are you gonna do? Well, then we would like, suffer from time. Time kills everything. Right, so then you, you have a setback, right? Yeah. Um, Major which is a little setback. crazy, right? I mean, yeah. Huge. So if something he's been working on for a year to put in place, he would have had a huge setback, which is, I mean, for anyone who's, you know, started a business in like a year of time, is like five years. Like the amount of time and effort you put in, um, I mean, yeah. that, that's, a, that's a potentially crushing blow, right? Yeah. And, that, um, and that is the beginning of this. Anthony, as a four-year vet, told me, what if that happened four times in one day for four days straight? How would you then survive? I think that was a question that really got me back to reality because I came to his office scared. I came uh, unfocused. I couldn't do anything but explain what just happened and why it threw me off. I don't know if you've ever been gut punched and your whole credibility was rocked, but my spirit was rocked because I've sacrificed everything for this and it almost went away like that. So to that point, Anthony made an even better one that kind of got me back to reality, which was, hey, listen, if you had that many things wrong, over four days straight, would you still work running your business? And I've never even considered that that many things could go wrong that many days straight. And it really just made me reassess and, and adjust and be like, you know what? This is just part of the process. Anthony looked at me and said, welcome to the club. And yeah. we keep pushing. Yeah, because and to, to kind of touch on that point where it's like, it happens four times in four days straight, but then on top of it, it can happen multiple times in the same day. Yeah. Um, so, so, and I don't know if you want to go into this. We don't have to go into like what happened later in the day. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to give details. I, on that, I will. But, but so basically, so, so <laughs> Kenny was telling me, he's like, you know, he comes here and, and I was explaining to him, hey, this is the first time, but now imagine it happens again later in the day. Yeah. Like you don't think, you're like, this is the worst thing that could possibly happen. My day can't get any worse. Yes. And then it does. I said that to myself. Okay. And, and so when Keenan was there, he was sitting there, he's like, look, I have this, uh, you know, we're interviewing someone. Uh, we think he, he's on board for the team. We've given him an offer. I feel good about it, right? I was like, all right, so here's the difference. Crazy. Because once you have like a bad thing happen, now, now all of a sudden there's another thing that could go wrong. But you never even thought it could go wrong, so you're not even prepared. No. So here's the difference. When shit goes wrong and you've had to react to it, now when you have something else uh, you know, coming up, 
you know, before it wasn't even a thought, I don't know if it was or not for you, but uh, it wasn't a heavy thought that, hey, this guy who like, we think is supposed to be a huge contributor to our team yes. may say no. Yes. And, and so that's when I, I told Keenan, I was like, yo, have you even thought about that? What happens if he comes back and he says, I want five times what you're offering me? Or he says, uh, flat out, no, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Have you thought about that? Yeah. And now you have to emotionally deal with that yeah. um, on top of what you just went through, right? And, and I remember after that happened with the, uh, with the space, you said, I, I just need a drink, right? I, I could use a drink. And that's the feeling, like when you get yeah. fucking rocked yeah. and you're just like, I need a drink. But then <laughs> you have to go out and then confront this other situation that could go wrong. Yeah. And what happened? Tell, tell us what happened. I yeah. come back to the office. And this is for the viewers who are just joining and uh, who have been on the line for a while. It was a very important day, right? Because the contract that was supposed to be signed was supposed to be the crux of the day. The inspection threw everything off. I got no work done in the afternoon. So this is what time? This is like 2? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You came to my office at like 2. Yeah, inspection, inspection yeah. happened. I came at 3. Inspection happened at 2. And the meeting was at 5. Right. So right. You, you, have, you have all of uh, two hours to kind of yeah. emotionally prep yourself for right. this. And I right? wasn't. Right. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so I go into the meeting, and lo and behold, I get told by this guy, uh, hey, this really is what I thought it would be. I'm not ready to sign yet. I'm still going to help, but I can't just sign right now. I'm just like, wait, you've had the contract for three days. You told us you would sign it two days ago. And then today, you came in with no laptop, so you didn't come to work. Oh, Why'd you come in? Ooh. What were you thinking when, when he walks in with no laptop? Do you notice that? I did. I hear the big book bag. So I asked. I was like, is your laptop in your book bag? Ooh. He said no. So I was like, wow, you already knew you were coming to say no. And you asked that question on purpose, right? Oh, very much so. So very if we so. didn't talk or we didn't go through that, would you have asked that question? No. Right. So that's, no. that's, that's an important point that I want to point out is that your mindset changes. And now, now he was actually aware of like, oh, shit, this could go wrong. Let me as fast as possible get there. Get the information I need, so then yeah. before he shocks me, I'm ready. I'm, ready. I, I'm thinking, and then in my head, I can figure out what I'm going to say yeah. or how I can do it. Exactly. Right. And thus, after he said no, I asked why. My co-founder comes to the room. He asks the same question. He gets a different answer. It was very simple. Oh yeah. Re whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. All right. <laughs> he gave a different answer. No shit. He gave me specificity. Here's the reasons why I don't want to do this. My co-founder comes in and is like, "Hey, all right, do you have the contract signed? Ah, uh, no. I just need to look over." over it one more time. My co-founder says, why? He's just like, ah, just normal. Let me look it over. So I'm sitting there, now I'm torn. <laughs> do I call this kid out? Do I make my co-founder look crazy? Do we seem as if we're gonna gang up on him? Or do I just stay quiet and observe? I.e., the earlier example prepared me for this one. So I sat and I observed. All I did afterwards, once the guy left, was say to my co-founder, we gotta take a different approach. You asking isn't gonna get there. I think I have to step up and really touch this guy in a different way, right? Get, get personal with him. He signed the next day because we communicated over text for, for you know, maybe four hours back and forth. So that was it. Amazing. So, <laughs> so he, that, that, to that, he was afraid to sign a contract. Right, right. So you had one super low. Later in the day, you get hit. Yeah. What, what do you think, you know, in between, be, between when he, you have the success of, of him signing though? Yeah. Right. What time does he sign the next day? Uh, let's call it three. Okay, so three o'clock. So yeah, that's a full like twenty four hours, right? Yeah. After you leave the meeting, after he leaves, and between then, I guess before you go to bed, what, what's going through your head? What are you thinking? First of all, I'm not thinking. The weight on my shoulders, and I'm just doing this because we're on camera, was like just heavy. I couldn't even lift my body. Up. I wasn't walking straight. I was mm -hmm. sullen, sunken. Like like you just feel like you took a beating. I feel like I just got hit with a two piece combo that I didn't get up from. Mm -hmm. I went to sleep still staggering as if I was uh, trying to get up for the next round. Right. And what did you do in the morning? Uh, I write down my goals every morning on paper. Um, I did not meditate. I did not stretch. I went to the mirror in the bathroom and I talked to myself. Uh, I told myself that I'm a champ. I told myself my business will be successful. I told myself that we're running a, uh, we're building a product that people actually need and nothing should stop us from delivering that product. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, at the end of the day, I can solve this. This is not an impossible situation. All right, so that's key. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. I, I didn't know what went through your head. This is all new information to me, but yeah, I'm liking this, right? Yeah, we haven't talked about this, guys. Um, that you can solve it. Yeah. That, so that, has been, that is so important. Yeah. Because if you go into the situation, you're like, it's one thing to say, fuck, like, we just got hit. 
we're screwed, yeah. right? That's what a lot of people do, and and, and that's a problem. Um, oh, oh shit moment. The the oh shit, but then it's saying oh shit, and for me, like I deal with things differently than than you do. Yeah. For me, I take my like 15, 20 minutes. I'm quiet. I don't want to talk to anyone. Everyone go go the fuck away, and let me just like think. Yeah. And then it's like, all right, all right now I'm ready yeah. uh, to fix it. Yeah. And, and once you say like you're going to fix it, you're going to solve the problem. That's half the battle. Yeah. Like, like if you don't think you can solve it, there's no way you're gonna actually like yeah. solve the problem. It so all rests here. Right? And even if you don't, you don't know how you're gonna solve Belief. it. So this is the fun part. You have no idea how you're gonna solve it. You don't need to. Right. But you know you're going to. Yep. Yeah, right. So and, and then that that belief and really like honestly believing it, not like oh yeah we might you know Believe right. Expectation. No, no, no. But like the actual belief that you will solve it. Uh, is really what gets you through a lot of situations. Yeah. Um, so, so how did you play? So now it's in the morning. Let me ask you this though: How did uh, what was the conversation like between you and Sean? I guess in the morning or very interesting. That period. Very right. interesting. Uh, so you have my co-founder who was just really nervous about it. At the end of the day, we've been through this twice where we tried to hire somebody that wasn't a good fit. Um, it helped us in our delay of six months. Um, so me just being quiet and collective. Uh, him calling and being very nervous, uh, but me just having to assure him, like, listen, on the phone, literally on the bus, it's 9.30 in the morning. I'm like, I got it. Relax. I'll talk You're to him. You're telling him that? Yeah, I'm telling my co-founder. Like, I'll let you go. go. Period. Like, I'm just going to get it done. I'm going to either take this kid to lunch, I'm going to take him to a coffee, I'm going to show up at his job um, cordially, but I'm going to get it done. I, there's no... What, what is Sean's reaction to that? Uh, his reaction was, uh, I, I, I got to trust you. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that, that, I think that's that's important when yeah. you have that trust. Yeah. Um, with a co-founder, where you know, if, if I'm Sean in this moment, I'm feeling really good. To be honest, yeah. I, I'm like, I might be. If he actually completely trusts you, yeah. Because he has so much trust in you. So this is the fun part, or, or the nice part about having a co-founder, right? That you actually trust. Yeah, man. Uh, to execute, which is so important. It's critical. Is that now you're like, okay, I know we're in a shitty situation, but. He's got my back, and he's gonna take care of it. So now he can free up his mental space to worry about something else yep. that's going on with the company. And now Keenan, though, you know, now you're dealing with it, and this puts a lot of pressure on you because yeah. you have to fucking deliver yeah. at this point, right? You, the, like you have to deliver. Execution. But also, did it, does it did it give you any confidence that that Sean feels confident in you? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it. I, I knew like, in my heart of hearts that once I told him I got it, he would stop. Hitting me up and being pestering, because like, right, that doesn't help. Right, uh, you just keep help. You know, hit whatever. Uh, so, anyways, you say you got it. Yep. It's, it's the morning. Yep. Um, now what? Uh, so now we start to talk via text. Um, he has a cold. The kid who's supposed to sign the contract. Um, I'm just hey, just checking in. How you feeling? How are your allergies? I know it was pretty bad yesterday, right? Again, just building that conversation that rapport. Yeah. Right. So the rapport works. Uh, we get a constant communication going. He's responding immediately over text in the middle of the day. Um, and then I drop in, unexpectedly, um, some talk about res our work. Um, and as soon as I drop that little gem about work, I then follow up and say, hey, by the way, did you sign the contract? Oh, no, you know what? I'll do it right now. And then in 13 seconds, he texts me back and said, check your email. There you go. Done. So that's interesting how you, you said, by the way. So you start off with other things, right? Yes. And, and again, he's selling this whole time. Yeah. When, you, when not, you're hiring, not selling. you're selling. Yeah. When, you, when you're, you're trying to solve the problem of the, uh, of the guy uh, who shows up at the office, the entire time you're, you're selling, literally. Yes. And, and um, so with this guy, you know, you're, you're building up. I guess instead of just like, if you would have just come out and be like, yo, where's the contract? Sign it, right? No way. No way. No. Strong but, arming would have not worked in any way. No, no, no. But because you take the approach of, you know, how you're doing, people. checking in, right? People, people first. Yeah, people first. Literally. It, and, and it has to be genuine, though. It's yeah, not like a, a fake thing, thing, like, no. because you're trying to sell the person, right? I it is selling, but, but, but selling is, like, sometimes has a, has a bad kind of connotation, but, like, you know, when it's actually caring about the person, right? It's different, yeah. you know? And, and if, he, if he didn't believe that you actually did, he wouldn't have signed, yeah. right? So it's taking the, the people first approach. Um, which is a whole different conversation that I want to have another time. Yeah. Um, the episode two. Episode two, maybe. Um, but uh, because you cared about him, uh, yeah. you're showing that you did. Care about and him. then he'll actually sign. But then you send in that gentle reminder. So here's here's the close, right? 
So you were, you were pitching, right? And, and like, yeah. right? But then the close was, you sent him a little message. Yeah. Because you can't just let it go and hope he signs. No. You, you have to give him that little nudge. Yeah, you have to nudge. That, that's, the, that's the key. You were closer we'll by, by sending that. Yeah. You pushed him over. He signed. He sent it to you. You know, mission accomplished. Um, well, it's just a start of things. But, um, so that was a hell of a 24 hours, huh? That was the craziest 24 hours of running the business. Yeah. Period. Yeah. There's nothing that's come that, there's nothing, nothing that comes close. Nor is anything that was such a reminder of why it's important to tell the truth, to sell with empathy, and more important than to listen more than you talk. Mm -hmm. Would you say that that was uh, the hardest day of the, yeah. the past year? Yeah, because you know what it was? It made me test my belief system. I believe in belief. I wholeheartedly trust that believing something and then expecting it to come to fruition means the universe and environment conforms to that belief. And the stronger your belief system is, the more things come into fruition the way you believe it to be. Mm -hmm. So honestly, I never had to put it to the test. I really never had to. So it's one thing to preach. say it. Right? Oh, yeah. it's, it's one thing to say it. So this, this is a problem oh with. Uh, we hustle. You know, we hustle. Right? When, when you hear videos about, uh, or like you listen to it, um, it's, it's hard to relate if you haven't been through it. Yeah. So it's one thing to, you know, you need to hustle. You need to grind. Like when times get tough, like you need to push through it. Um, and, uh, but it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, I believe that. But it's you actually believe it, that when you're actually hit with it, mm -hmm. you know, for the first time, he was hit with it for the first time and he yeah. responded extremely well. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's a real test. Yeah. It's like, you actually believe all this stuff. Um, can you get through it? And here, here's on top of it though. This was just a taste, right? Uh, and I got the phrase, welcome to the club actually from, uh, from uh, a friend of mine, his dad runs a very successful business, and uh, I just actually personally went through some stuff uh, the past couple of weeks um, with the business, and uh, his response to me, even after four years, because he's been running his business for like 30 years, uh, he told me, welcome to the club. This is after four years of you know, me going through stuff. Uh, so this is just a taste, you know, yeah. I, you know as it goes, uh, there's days where you know, you'll go up and down and up and down. Um, and like you mentioned, relentless, four days in a row. Like this was one day. Right? Yeah. Um, Can imagine. It, it's how do you go through four days of that? And, and this is where um, it gets really tough is like the emotional strain that you get and stress and, and weight on your shoulders when, when you are running a company. Um, and then you just hit and hit and hit. And then it's like, all right, how do you, how do you get up sometimes? It's kind of crazy. Um, but uh, I think that, that might be a whole other conversation where it's like, how do you go through. Uh, you know, 10 of these in a row, or, or weeks straight of it. No. Um, and then encountering experiences um, that you never thought. Um, but anyways, well, we're gonna, I think we're gonna wrap it up here because, you know, the, the story was that, uh, you know, he went through his first uh, experience being, being an entrepreneur. To me, to me, he just became yeah, an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, this is the entry. You know, this is like the, you know, the, the ante uh, to get in. Yeah. Um, in, in another video, I'm going to start talking about uh, some other stuff, which is like when you're hit over and over and over and over again. And then, uh, you know, looking back for me, it's been like a series of like a couple years of just like nonstop, you know. Of course, there's successes in there. There's good times, but like, you know, it's just bad, bad, bad. And it's like, how do you respond to it and how do you get through it? So um, anyways, um, thank you, everyone. Uh, for joining. We really appreciate it, guys. Uh, I think I'm gonna start doing this more. Um, where we talk about kind of like the the hidden things or like the, the life of like running a business and being yeah. an entrepreneur that kind of people don't talk about. Yeah. Um, the experiences, like it's not all, you know, amazing and, yeah. and things are great all the time, right? Um, there's a lot of lot of stuff and hard things you have to deal with um, that you have to get through. But that's that's what makes it fun. Yeah. I mean, if you see it that way, for me, it's fun. Right? It is entrepreneurship. You, you go through it and, uh, entrepreneurship, you know, a, a mentor of mine, I was talking to her the other day, because I was like, oh my God, I've just been through so much stuff. Like, I don't know how much more of this I can take. And I've right. been through a lot. And uh, she says something to, to the extent of, um, basically you have to enjoy going through the dirt and getting dragged through the shit. And it's interesting because it's like, even though you're going through it and you're like upset, it's still like that weird, um, thing where like you're actually enjoying it um, and this is where like you know something like there might be something wrong with us <laughs> we're like you we like it. we like going through the shit and getting through it because the thing is like getting through it once you're through it like how good did you feel phenomenal right phenomenal. after you're like 
Fuck yeah, right? There's a it was a level I reached that I had never been to before. Mm-hmm. Like it, like it's ecstasy, like yeah, it's yes, work. right? Yeah. And it's amazing, and, and you go through it, and the more shit you go through, when you get through that, sure. then it's even even stronger. Yeah. Um, but it's it's knowing that hey, you know, you got out of it within a day. It still was a hell of a day. Yeah. But how do you get through a week of that, yeah. right? And not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. or or two or three weeks of that. Um, it gets really difficult. And this is where it's like, people aren't talking about it as much, I feel. Um, yeah, or the repercussions of uh, when you try to do it the wrong way by lying and bullshit. Right. Uh, and then because of you panic. So here, here's the here's the thing also. Panic. One last thing is like the ability to keep your cool and not panic. Um, Intangible. Right. And, and that's something that I think separates a lot of people from being successful or not. If you would have panicked, Hands right, so how are you gonna do it if you if you're panicking there versus like you know when you're just starting two awesome. years three years from now, awesome. you, you can't panic. Yeah, right. Like you're you're the leader of the company. You can't uh, you know when you have fifty people working yeah. under you. Um, the game phase is beyond necessary. Right, the game phase, the game phase. That's a good way of putting it. Right, you you have to put it on um, and respond to it. So I don't know what that is. Maybe that's a whole other segment where like I wonder like where that comes from. Um, we have a lot of content to talk about. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of content. We're gonna Sunday afternoons. We're gonna, we're gonna bring you. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just gonna write some of these ideas down before I forget. But uh, anyways, uh, thank you for joining. Just to recap one more time, uh, it's Frankie, basically Matt, PJ, Dennis. We love you. What's up, guys? Um, it's uh, you know running a business, being an entrepreneur is not. Uh, not always fun. You go through a lot of shit, and um, we're gonna tell you about it. And we're gonna tell you about it. That's basically what we're out to do. Uh, and now, now that he went through his first experience, he, uh, you know, to right. me now, now he's on a it's different, a, different level now. Um, you know, he's got a long way to go. Oh, I still yeah. got a long way to go. Oh, yeah. um, but oh, yeah. hey, let's we'll, we'll share the journey with you. Um, walk, walk and, with us. Yeah, <laughs> walk with us. So, anyways, thanks, guys. See you later. Peace. Welcome to the club. <laughs>